We're going to look at a hypothetical pathway for the formation of spikes in certain cells of the ectoderm of a spiny beetle. We'll start by going over a few mutations along with their effects on the pathway, and then I'll hypothesize why some of the ectoderm cells are smooth and some have spikes. First off, we'll build the network by going over each of the genes. The first gene, S, promotes the second gene, P, which promotes the third, I, which inhibits the fourth, K, which inhibits the fifth, E, which directly leads to the formation of the spikes. The first mutation we'll look at resulted in no functional P genes. To determine the results, we simply need to follow the pathway. If the P gene stops working, the I gene will be expressed, preventing the inhibition of the K gene, which now blocks both the E gene and the formation of spikes, resulting in a smooth cell. The second mutation resulted in a lack of functional I genes. Once again, we'll follow the path to see the results. If the I gene stops working, the K gene will no longer be inhibited, allowing it to block expression of the E gene and therefore blocking the formation of spikes. This allows us to recognize that a lack of functional I genes has the same result as the lack of functional P genes. The produced cells will be smooth. The third mutation causes a lack of both functional I and E genes. The dysfunctional I gene allows expression of the K genes, which would inhibit the E genes if they weren't already dysfunctional as a result of the mutation. This means the formation of spikes is blocked twofold because of the mutant E gene and the expressed K genes. We didn't really need to follow the pathway to this because we know the E gene will be unable to form spikes from the start, which is all that really matters. The final mutation caused a lack of both functional S and K genes. Following the pathway, we can see the mutant S gene prevents the P gene from being expressed, in turn preventing the I gene from being expressed. If the K gene wasn't dysfunctional from the start, the lack of the I gene would result in the E gene being blocked. In this mutant, however, the K gene is dysfunctional, meaning the E gene and therefore the formation of spikes won't be inhibited, resulting in a spiked cell. There are a few possible explanations for not every ectoderm cell having spikes. The first is the possible presence of an inhibitor only expressed in cells determined early in development to be smooth. It could also be the result of mutations causing faulty gene paths like those we looked at earlier.